Hello and welcome to another episode of Monday Markets. As always, we're brought to you by Woo. Links available in the description below. Today's video is going to primarily focus on lower timeframes on BTC because I want to also have some time to talk about a few of the altcoins. On the whole, the market's been slower than before and a bit grindier. That is a somewhat material change in character as we discussed on Casual Friday. But before getting into that, first a higher time frame overview. There's nothing terribly threatening yet. I think if you were to look at this chart and say what would make the monthly time frame bearish, I think the earliest you could start to make that argument is below sort of acceptance and or a close below 58k. Uh, because at that stage, this portion or the, the month we've had so far would qualify as a failed breakout. So be that closing this month below 58k or closing somewhere above it and then next month closing below, uh, any version of that would bring into discussion the idea of a failed breakout and that with it brings the likelihood of a larger pullback. Uh, absent that, I don't think you're going to be getting super bearish signals in the monthly time frame, just doesn't seem likely. In general, historically, the all-time high has been an area of kind of chop and making life miserable for early breakout traders, more so than being a massive reversal and or inflection point. Uh, if you want to sort of visualize what's going on at the moment, you can see that the all-time high essentially got spiked and, and the market hasn't really continued from then onwards and is certainly testing a lot of the metal of the all-time high breakout traders. But just as far as the monthly goes, uh, if you want a monthly bearish signal, it, it can only realistically come sub 58k in my view. And even then, um, there are levels that aren't too far away that would, I think, make for good trading opportunities. The weekly time frame, I uh, won't go over it too much because it essentially reflects the same as the monthly, uh, where you've had the all-time high spike, uh, but no follow through as of yet. And it only really starts to become threatening. Um, and then threatening is a sort of very loosely used term. Uh, if the entire breakout structure starts to look compromised. And even if that were to be the case, uh, the assumption would be that this is a kind of all-time high washout and there will be a good opportunity, some sort of higher low, some sort of consolidation to buy more so than, oh, well, we're fucked. Let's just go down until the end of the year. Um, I think my, most of my focus will be on the daily time frame and the lower time frames. And specifically on the daily, there are a couple of areas that I think make sense. Uh, the first is this resistance level at 68.4. Uh, if you'll recall, I think we were discussing it um, on the previous episode of Monday Markets insofar as the market's been stair-stepping uh, through these breakout levels. It sort of breaks out, flips, and then it keeps going. Uh, and so the fact that we've traded back within that breakout level at 68.4 and it's providing resistance is, is really not something that we've seen in a while. Uh, if you look at the more recent consolidation, oh, it feels like a lifetime away, but when BTC was trading at 52k, uh, this was a consolidation, but no crazy sort of fake out signals. Uh, we had a bit of a dip and then just completely burst through and kept going. Even if we take arguably some of the most tumultuous recent price action around the ETF, um, the markets on the day of the news or in close proximity to it offered a failed breakout. That failed breakout didn't really go anywhere, pretty much went to the other extremity. And then as soon as it sort of got back above uh, that same structure, that was a nice continuation trade. I think that logic is at least to some extent applicable to the current structure, which is to say that um, when we when the market was at sort of 45-45k, there was a failed breakout, but instead of giving a lot of downside price action, the better trade and the better signal was a breakout post fake out, I guess is one way to phrase it. Um, I don't think that's the worst lens with which to view this price action as well, which is to say that at the moment, it's a failed breakout, uh, but a breakout post fake out, which is to say close back above 68.4, uh, would be a decent continuation signal. Um, obviously, as always, there's, there, there is some risk that you end up buying a lower high in what you think is a range reclaim, uh, but no setup is perfect and there are always trade-offs and risks associated with it. Just in terms of the price action that's most pertinent at the moment, uh, I still think uh, the earliest daily time frame bullish signal if you're into buying strength uh, would be back above 68.4, which would invalidate this whole uh, spiky failed breakout structure. Uh, on the daily time frame, there are two other areas that I think are good and interesting for trading. One is this most more recent consolidation at 61, 62K. That's a nice little base, essentially. Uh, we've wicked into it before. It's also arguably the other side of this 68.4 um, resistance or range high, the lows come in uh, at around 60k round number. 
Uh, so whether it's just trading into that range low or spiking below and eventually uh, finding its way back above 61, 62K, uh, rather than deferring completely to the monthly time frame and sort of sub 58 or whatever else, uh, I think especially if you're short to medium term trading, um, looking at the other side of resistance makes sense. And for me, the other side of resistance is 61, 62, and that would qualify in the shallow pullback camp. Uh, if the shallow pullback camp is incorrect and this turns into a larger pullback, uh, then I think, again, the daily time frame will generally be useful uh, because we know there's this consolidation at 52K. Uh, and that also aligns pretty much exactly with this somewhat plausible weekly structure um, there as well. So that would make sense. I think in general, um, in a strong trend, if you're going to be looking for counter trend moves and looking to sort of do business at support levels, uh, that approach should be quite conservative, more so than, oh, well, we lost one support level and now I'm going to look three, four levels lower on the higher time frames. I think you almost have to give the market the benefit of the doubt uh, or at least be open-minded to doing business at levels that are in tandem with the larger trend and somewhat closer to the market. Uh, and the good thing is if we sort of look at these daily structures on lower time frames, which are generally preferred time frames for shorter term trading, uh, they all kind of make sense. On those time frames right so you can see this uh, daily range low is just a really nice four hour cluster uh, that same daily breakout level is a nice four hour consolidation so so those areas at least are reasonably well defined uh, and obviously if we have failed breakouts or breakouts or breakdown and continuation or whatever else uh, given this is a weekly show there'll be plenty of time to update so this is more of a sort of roadmap view in what I think is interesting, at least for this week. And at least for this week, the answer is some version of 68.3 and 61K. Um, yeah, that's it for BTC. Uh, the only other thing I will reiterate is that on the way up, and again, this is to some extent rehashing Casual Friday and Don's point specifically. So if you want to watch that, I would recommend you do so. But other people have also made this analysis or similar analysis uh, by looking at the lower time frames, CBS being one of them. Uh, and the argument is essentially that one of the markers of this uptrend, especially in the post ETF era, uh, has been, well, there have been two things. One is this sort of impulse consolidate impulse type of structure. And essentially, if you don't get in on the consolidation, the market runs off and leaves you behind. Uh, and the other is that sharp dips uh, result in new highs relatively quickly and don't sort of threaten the market too much, which is to say even if you have a dip, something that looks scary on the lower time frames, uh, that has in the past or recently been bought up very quickly and makes a new high. So if you sort of see a breakdown in market structure and think, oh, well, maybe it'll go deeper now, um, on the way up, that wasn't particularly true. And these sort of scary looking moves uh, didn't result in sustained downside price action. Uh, at the moment, although it's fairly early, uh, we appear to be violating uh, both of those rules, which is to say that when we have breakouts from consolidations, they don't go as far as they have in the past. And whenever we have sort of anomalous selling, if you will, uh, especially recently, these sort of breakdown looking candles that end up swiping the low, spiking the low, whatever, rather than uh, immediately recovering and making a new high, or at least sort of holding the consolidation, uh, there's been a bit of a march lower. So you get a breakdown, you get a slight bounce, and in the past, if that bounce would have made a new high pretty quickly, or at least you get a breakdown, slight bounce, consolidate, and then makes a new high, more recently, it's just been um, breakdown, weak bounce, and then another leg lower. So again, this is fairly tentative evidence, given we don't have a ton of price action, uh, but I think it's worth being aware of nonetheless. Uh, on the ETH front, ETH BTC has still been struggling. Uh, this, is, this is really tough. Uh, to look at, especially as the market has been sort of pressured, if you will, um, four hour breakdown, multi multi time frame sort of breakdowns here on ETH BTC. Uh, as always, not, not not super compelling as a chart. Uh, recent market structure break as well, just sort of bleeding back into this larger consolidation that it's been trading in. Um, it doesn't have to be the end of the world uh, if it manages to hold on to some semblance of a range low where a lot of these bounces have originated at around. 05. Uh, but if BTC is in for a larger correction, at least from the available evidence, uh, maybe this is where I diverge from Don a little bit. It doesn't look like um, I can't at least make a strong case for ETH strength if the if, if BTC gets pummeled. Um, I think it would be weaker. But in any case, whether bullish or bearish, one way to interpret this is that ETH is still not particularly interesting um, 
as a trade, certainly not on the long side for the moment. Um, ETHUSD, yeah, this, so if we look at this on the weekly time frame, uh, depending on the weekly close, uh, the argument, we talked about this level on Monday markets as well. And at the time, this level was used as justification for, hey, you know, BTC looks fine or whatever, whatever the analysis was at the time. Um, but if you're going to be long looking for signs of strength in BTC, it doesn't make sense because of this weekly resistance. And I think it's done more than one could have bargained for. Uh, at this stage, there are two levels similar to BTC that I find interesting, at least on ETH, uh, if not if not just for observation, even if ETH BTC doesn't allow for expressing a bullish bias for a bounce. The first is 3,500 weekly, uh, this last high. Uh, if, we, if we close the week below it, then you have a weekly time frame uh, failed breakout after a test of resistance type of argument. And that would just kind of be a shitty looking weekly chart. Uh, and the most proximate area to do business, if you're bullish ETH or believe in the ETH BTC rotation or whatever else, I think will be some version of 3K to maybe as early as 3300. 30, That's a bit close to the high for my liking. Uh, perhaps uh, the closer to 3K or 3.1K, the better. And that's some sort of weekly structure, at least. It's a fairly self-evident inflection point, right? You've got the lows here, highs, etc. It was quite good, even got tapped uh, before the move up. So bigger picture above 3K, I wouldn't be terrible. That's a nice sort of support contextually on the weekly time frame. Pullback wise, that'd be 20 odd percent. Um, not terrible, especially if you allow for a wick below that. Um, if that gets stuffed, again, it's a weekly show, no point in jumping ahead into three, four layers of hypotheticals, uh, but then you'd sort of look to the pre-breakout cluster as a whole. But the market, I think, would look quite rough at that point. Um, on the altcoin front, I still think if the market offers sort of a slower, uh, but larger correction as a whole, uh, because it, it's worth sort of considering that the market has been primed for fast resolution on shallow dips. So if we get a move that breaks both of those things, which is slow resolution on larger dips, uh, I expect the altcoin participants to be very unused to that type of price action, which could facilitate some sloppy selling and potentially good entries on the back of it. Uh, this is kind of the mini list I've put together. It's not super researched. Um, it's more sort of what has mind share in my mind, at least. Uh, Whiff is one of them, especially after the uh, GCR official NFT type purchase. Uh, this thing still seems to have a lot of mind share and uh, I just think ignore it. the volatility on it in itself from a trading perspective is massive. Uh, and in general, in terms of its, well, mind share and mimetic value, uh, I don't think I'd want to ignore it completely. Um, levels here are a bit trickier. I think in general, if you get a good setup on BTC at a high time frame support or a dip buy or a wipeout or a liquidation that lands roughly around those levels or round number or whatever type of um, exhaustion signals your system generates, uh, wherever this ends up, at least recently and or historically, uh, it's been the first to bounce and has bounced pretty aggressively. Um, so that that is wherever this lands, that that's one where for a short to medium term reversion, I think it'd be interesting. Uh, levels on this thing is sort of tricky given a lack of price history and you'd have to go on lower time frames at least the ones that stand out to me from like an eyeballing point of view are the two dollars 20 range low uh and then arguably below that uh a dollar 69 but again with altcoins as a whole uh, especially if the money sort of liquidity becomes a bit scarce um you should always have a wider margin for how much they can wick which is why in general altcoins uh, on leverage uh, those are almost antithetical ideas, as popular as that may seem, because the high volatility should do the leverage for you, right? Uh, that should do the heavy lifting. And the wicks can be such that even if your overall idea is correct and the support you ultimately wanted to bid holds, if your leverage is too high and, and you sort of shoebox yourself into having to be needlessly precise, uh, that ends up working against you. So even just the basic market structure articulation here of 220, 169, 119, whatever, and then looking at uh, BTC or where the market is as a whole. Um, I think that uh, these areas at least make sense to me uh, to the extent that TA makes sense. Uh, but I, I would take guidance from BTC more so than these levels in a vacuum. Uh, on the AI meme front, AGIX, AGIX, uh, the weekly time frame isn't going to give us much until, unless the market just really goes to zero. And by zero, I mean back to 50 cents, but purely in terms of sort of correction terms, that'd be 64% down. The, not even sure you want to buy it at that point. So we have to, as we have done in the past, look at lower time frames. Uh, and I think 
this cluster that we mentioned previously between 90, 85, well, 95 cents as the upper boundary uh, and 80-ish cents as the lower boundary makes sense. You could even be a bit more generous in accounting for a wick to have 75 to 80 cents. Um, and if we look on that, look at it on the four hour, this is just essentially giving some precedence to the periods of consolidation that we've had before the big run up and, you know, a bit of a trend shift going on there. So similar, uh, you know, if AI, if the AI narrative is going to be sticky, um, then having some exposure to that, if not least for a mean reversion is sensible or at least understandable. Um, and pure you know pure recency bias might make you think well this thing is just a piece of shit and only goes down uh but if you just look at the magnitude of this move and the breakout um i wouldn't disregard it completely uh, i think the general at least my short to medium term idea is that if btc gets gives significant weakness um then altcoins will overreact and it's those mean reversions post overreaction at the very least that make for good trades and they those can perhaps morph into creating a swing trade from that short term uh, price dislocation or inefficiency, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just so I end up essentially process-wise eyeballing daily higher time frame areas uh, and then seeing where the stuff that I know how to trade, <laughs> which is BTC and ETH primarily, where that lands, uh, and then adding some exposure as appropriate, uh, especially if I, there are some lucky entries, if you will, uh, on the altcoin front. So that's made its way to the watch list. More of a recent relative strength bias on Jupiter here. Um, controversial launch, got disregarded a fair bit, uh, but it's kind of smiled its way back up. Uh, I don't think that's completely meaningless. And in general, the Solana ecosystem still, uh, I, mean, I mean, people are sending, the wealth creation effect there is quite extraordinary. Quite an extraordinary rug creation effect as well. But nonetheless, uh, those two go hand in hand. Uh, purely in terms of levels, um, purely BTC dependent as well. I said purely twice, we're apparently a Protestant live stream now. Uh, nonetheless, local range low, at a buck 20 and then if alts really shit the bed i'd be looking at the origin of this up move around 80 to 98 cents uh, and again yeah well, you're depending on how quick the move is how liquidation driven it is whether people are adding leverage on the way down which would make you think that it's going to wash out even harder lots of variables that go into actually assessing out of the levels that you've squiggled on your chart which ones to use to do business uh, but just at a glance or eyeballing this thing um if it gives a gift on a bigger dip i think uh, that's at least one of the better bets if re if the sort of recent price action is any indicator and as a sort of Solana proxy bet of sorts. AVAX, I mean, it's green today, but it's fairly telling in itself. I think the last time we talked about AVAX was uh, shilling breakout continuation through this level. Um, I don't exactly remember where we were, where we were, but even if, even if we take the most the least charitable view of that and the tippity top, uh, that sort of moved twenty percent from where it is now. That's quite good. Um, Similar consideration, sort of skewed towards relative strength. Levels-wise, it's a bit messier. Um, again, contingent on BTC giving something more material. Uh, perhaps the origin of the breakout at around 49 to 47 cents uh, makes sense. <laughs> uh, otherwise, again, you don't even have to, a lot of the time, you don't even have to draw altcoin levels, right? Um, I think there are two things you can do. One is pick the really high time frame stuff and pick stink bids and put place stink bids on those kind of low probability fills. But if you if you do get filled, there's a good chance that it's a great entry in your right. Uh, and the second one is take your guidance from BTC and ETH. And when you get a good setup on those and or think those have bottomed uh, because the markets are correlated, you then pull the trigger on altcoins. So you can quite effectively, in my view at least, trade altcoins without giving too much technical weight to random levels themselves. Uh, just kind of the stink bid strategy and or the market is correlated strategy. Uh, you can have a perfectly fine time trading alts even without doing TA on them because of how the correlations tend to play out. Uh, Pepe kind of a last dance type of thing uh, to see if uh, there's still mimetic mindshare outside of Solana pre-sales. Um, levels wise, again, same caveat supply. You could just use BTC and or stink bid. Uh, local extremity at 631, uh, bigger washout extremity, just sort of way lower down at 318. Maybe we could be a bit cheeky and look look at the listing high, at least on Binance at 373. Uh, but again, need to make space for Wix, this, that, and the other. Uh, if you look on the four hour, um, reasonably self-evident where those high time frame levels land on lower time frames, which is to say the 600s-ish uh, is the local range low, and then the bigger washout 
is around 400 in the form of this mini consolidation again impulse consolidate impulse consolidate impulse consolidate those sort of consolidation pockets um are where you you're more likely to find support than sort of just the number of candles in the same direction and then solana self-evident outperformer especially recently um the weekly level that actually broke out of that was quite useful signal wise uh was this inflection point at 135 uh, if you want to get cheeky with it you could use the top of the cluster at 147 um, if you look on that on the daily time frame uh, it's slightly constrained you might be tempted to give more weight to recent price action sort of the the flip that took place at 120 but again just like BTC, uh, it's more the case that you know that there's some technical structure between 120 and 130. If it gives enough weakness, and this would be pretty pretty big fucking move, uh, but if BTC gives enough weakness, uh, this is kind of on the watch list, and you know there are levels in that area. Otherwise, it's I'm not a huge fan of finding slash drawing support levels uh, if the market is just completely diagonal, uh, even if you consider the argument made just now in terms of impulse, consolidate, impulse, consolidate, impulse. Uh, when the market is just getting walked up, uh, you don't get these types of consolidations and these delta clusters, essentially, where there's a bigger order herding, order clustering effect, uh, they make for better support levels than kind of a diagonal um, bit of price action. So that's, that's what I think of Solana. Um, yeah, I'm going to shut up. I wouldn't put too much weight on the altcoin side of things. I'm a bit of a moron. Uh, I think the analysis regarding BTC is probably slightly more helpful, or at least if there's one useful thing to derive from this video, it's the idea that you can completely competently trade altcoins even without doing short-term, medium-term TA uh, on those alts themselves, just by using uh, BTC and ETH timing as your proxy for those. Uh, hope that makes sense. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend and see you for the newsletter tomorrow at trletter.com and all sorts of good stuff later this week. And thank you to Woo for supporting the show. If you're looking for a centralized trading exchange, it's one of them. We think it's a good one, but obviously we have a conflict of interest because we're shilling it to you. Nonetheless, uh, check it out. And if you have any questions, leave them below. Thank you. Bye-bye.